Hey, welcome everyone. This video will be talking about cores and threads. Now, if you want to see the written version of this video, you can find a link to my website in the video description. And uh, also in the video description is a playlist about me explaining, you know, general IT technology, specifically CPUs, because thus far I've talked about what is a CPU. That's like a 30 minute lesson. And then also uh, clock speed, explaining what that is. And in that video, I really dive into a much more deeper analysis of what defines a fast processor. One of the things I note in that video is cores and threads. It's just one of many factors to determine what is a fast processor or not. So throughout this video, we'll be talking about uh, a few main concepts, which I've divided this video into chapters. CPU cores, multi-cores, which expands on that, threads, parallelism, 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 guys, seriously, man, just, you, you can read it there, and uh, multi-threading. And then I'm going to simplify things. I'm going to provide like an analogy example because I feel like if you still can't get it up to here, we'll make it super simple for you to understand. And then of course, the difference between uh, cores and threads, which is better. Okay, so talking about CPU core, just one for now. We'll get into multi shortly. A CPU core functions as an independent processing unit within the processor itself. It's physically within the processor itself, the core. And if you have multi-core processors, they're also physically within the processor itself. So back in the good old days when I was a kid, like a thousand years ago, um, you had one core processors on computers, even smartphones like Android, the first set had one core processors. So regardless of what device you're using, we'll use this as an example. You have the operating system, which is like Windows, Linux, whatever. At the same time, you're, you have a web browser browsing the web. And at the same time, while you're browsing the web, maybe you have a calculator app going. So how does this work? People think that with one core processors, it's doing all this at the exact same time. That is not correct. What's basically happening in a very simplified form, of course, is you have the CPU here, which is this black box. And then the operating system is like, okay, I got one task for the process to work on, send it over. I'm first in line. Then the web browser is like, hey, I got another small task out of many to do. I'm next in line. It does that. Then the calculator is like, hey, I got two tasks for you to work on, and this is going to take priority. You're going to work on those next. Then the operating system is like, hey, I got another three, and you get the idea, keeps going on. So the operating system and the services and applications that you have are queuing their tasks in line to be worked on. This happens so fast, a human being cannot recognize that it's doing these independently in steps and sequences. You'll think it's multitasking simultaneously at the same time. It is not. It happens within like milliseconds of a second. Okay, so now we're talking about multi-cores. I know your eyes are probably looking over here. Just try to ignore this just for a second. Multi-cores in a processor introduce true multitasking. Uh, basically, so in this example, we have the outer square, which is the CPU, and then we have four little boxes. This is an example providing for a quad-core processor, which means you have four cores. Uh, dual core is two, uh, quad core is four, which I just said, uh, octa is eight, and you, you kind of get the idea, so on and so forth. So by having multiple cores on a single CPU, they're located within the CPU itself, that's important to know. You can have four different cores working at the same time, true multitasking. So this allows work to be done simultaneously, right? This is true simultaneous work. So in this example, as we took earlier, I actually got rid of calculator and replaced it with video editor because calculator is not very processor intensive. So OS is green, web browser is red, video editor is blue. So if you have our example here, we have a quad core processor, four cores, you can have you know, the operating system providing four, uh, two different tasks at the same time at the beginning. Well, two cores are like, I'll take on those tasks and work on it. And they've queued tasks from your uh, web browsing and video editing. However, you have two other cores here that are already working on web browsing and video editing. And they have a queue for more video editing tasks and more tasks in queue from the operating system. So this is all done. All this queuing of tasks is calculated and uh, done by the operating system and the CPU very fast, but to get the idea that you have, you know, true multitasking, which means faster efficiency of the processor. Stop looking here. You'll notice the diagram is different. Stop looking. I know you're looking there. Just, just hold on. We'll get to it shortly. So threads are also known as a couple of the, uh, naming conventions because cores are physically within the CPU. Threads are not the more logical, like software type, if you will. So they're known, known as other things. You have threads, they're also known as virtual cores, logical cores, and logical processors, but threads is the main term, so we'll stick with that. What I'm trying to denote now is that previously it was one set of tasks per core. Now you'll notice there's two sets of tasks per core. So you have one set, one set, one set, one set, divided by these black lines. Here's where 
this all basically works. Something runs like a web browser or your video editing program. The operating system then establishes a thread with the processor saying, hey, got some new stuff to work on, let's open up a new thread. So let's say only one thread was working. It's like, okay, this core here, I got, I got some wiggle room. I'll open up this new thread here and start working on these tasks as well to take some of the workload. The CPU scheduler, which is an actual term, that's why it's in quotations, determines a thread order. So what is gonna process in what sequence? Because again, the operating system isn't running nonstop with tasks provided to the cores. Same with your video editing and uh, web browser. The tasks are broken up. So each color, as you remember, represents a different set of tasks. Green is operating system, uh, red is web browser, blue is video editing. You notice that it has a whole bunch of stuff broken across the multi-cores on multiple threads. So basically what this is known as Quad-core processor, because it has four cores, with eight threads, okay? Because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's two threads per core, it's eight. And again, all of this will be simplified in the chapter of this video uh, under simplification, okay? Cores don't actually work on both threads at the same time, right? It's actually flipping between them very rapidly. So if we're focusing on this top right corner, we'll call this core one, it has a thread here, it has a thread here. It's flipping between them super rapidly, okay? It's not working on both of them at the same time. But typically, threads work one at a time, and it's flipping between them very rapidly. Same with this one, we'll call it core two, is working here on the, on the uh, operating system, and the video editing task is switching between them very rapidly. Okay, so we're gonna talk about my arch enemy, the word parallelism versus multi-threading, and there is some overlapping uh, concepts here. So, Parallelism is basically, it's inherently supported on multi-core processors because parallelism, what it basically means is that it's working on multiple tasks at the same time. By having multiple cores, whether you have multiple threads or not, it is, has multiple cores, so all four cores in a quad-core processor are working at the same time, working on a set of given tasks to them. Because without multi-threading, each core would only work on one task at a time, so greater efficiency with multi-threading. How do we get that done? Well, actually, we don't have to get that done. Some very smart people did that in uh, the example of Intel and AMD. So Intel, they've actually dubbed their technology as hyper-threading, and AMD called it simultaneous multi-threading, SMT for short. These two sets of technology from each respective chip maker allow simultaneous uh, multi-threading. What that basically means is that earlier I said, well, core one is switching between these two threads very rapidly. However, this technology is not new. It's, this has been around for many, many, many years. Just no one really cares to talk about it, which I think is a shame. I think it's really cool and interesting. There is a catch with this. So with Intel, for example, um, on some, not all, but some ninth, I'm looking at my notes, ninth, 10, and 11 gen chips, they dropped hyperthreading. They're like, we're just not gonna do it anymore. We'll stop. Uh, in fact, more recently with Arrow and Lunar Lake processors, that's for those of you that aren't aware, those are kind of like their code names for some uh, chipset designs that come out at certain times. There's no hyperthreading. They're like, just drop it all together. We'll switch to a uh, different type of chipsets uh, architecture, which focus on uh, P cores and E cores. I I'm not going to focus on energy efficiency cores and performance cores in this video. I could probably say that for another video. However, AMD is still pretty true to SMT and multi-threading. In fact, very recently, not too long ago, on their official AMD site, on an official blog post, they were touting and boasting about uh, SMT technology and how the you know it provides this great level of efficiency and whatnot. Hey, so sorry to disturb you, but a quick word from, well, me. So if you are enjoying the content so far, I'm happy you are. Maybe consider subscribing to my channel. It literally helps my channel grow. Not only that, YouTube is not something I do as a full-time commitment. It's something I have to do on weekday after hours in the late evenings and on weekends. Some of the technology lesson videos that I create on my channel, it's me spending time invested to create those lectures and make sure the best information is provided to you. So maybe consider hitting the super thanks button. It really helps me out in funding this channel and some of the content I continue providing to you. So with that said, let's continue on with what you were watching. This will really simplify everything we've learned so far in this video if you're still confused. We'll compare this to an analogy of uh, a kitchen and a restaurant, okay? So we have one core, which equals one chef. This one chef has to, all these tasks they have to work on, a multiple set of tasks. A lot of stuff for one core, one chef to work on. It's not very efficient, but they have to kind of jump between all these things as they're working on different dishes and different orders that come in. 
Okay, so now we have four chefs, which will be a four core processor, also known as quad core processor, to help with the efficiency, with multitasking, make the kitchen run faster instead of one chef. So one chef is now gathering greens and chopping. The next one is cooking and frying a different meal or different order. Another one's making sauce and checking orders. The other one's plating meals and cleaning up. So as you can see, the, the tasks are now divided up. They're all able to work on separate tasks for their own respective orders, just like a, a, a processor would. However, there's a catch with this though, is that for example, let's say this dude over here has finished plating the meals and cleaning up for their order. The, the next table that they're supposed to work on hasn't come in yet. They're just kind of chilling and relaxing. Well, these three chefs or three cores are still working. This one might help here and there, but it's like, hey, I got my own area of tasks to work on, but there's nothing, so I'm just gonna take it a little easy. So greater efficiency, but still not the full potential of the core or the restaurant, if you will. All right, so your kitchen, which is making a ton of money, finally got inspected by Gordon Ramsay. He came into the restaurant and just butchered you for not having a good, efficient workflow. He starts yelling, I haven't seen it this bad since the days I lived in Nottingham. You're making pasta sauce. This looks like Yorkshire pudding. God save the king. God save the king. God save the king. You know, so after he's gone crazy and whatnot, the head of the restaurant decides to hire assistants. So you'll notice that the lines kind of go a little bit halfway up. So you have the cores, which are the chefs with the chef hats and they hire assistants without the hats on. Not only do you have threads, which is denoted as the assistant, but you have a, if you have hyperthreading and SMT, they're all working on separate tasks, exactly how it would on a core with multiple threads with SMT or hyperthreading technology. So everyone has an assigned task in the kitchen, just like on an operating system, everyone has an assigned task to work on, on a CPU core with multiple threads, allowing the maximum efficiency and capability of your processor, except if it supports overclocking before any nerds try to you know, correct me on that, even though I'm a nerd myself. This is where things get very complicated though, and there's no definite answer, and that's why. I'm just giving you, to, you might not want to hear it, but that is a flat out truth. There's no answer to, or is, is it better to have more cores versus more threads? That answer just does not exist, okay? And I'll explain why. Some people ask, are more cores good, or more threads good? And well, and what about some situations? Well, what about actually higher clock speeds with less cores, better than more cores with lower clock speeds? So basically what I mean is, Let's say you have a, a quad-core processor at 3 gigahertz. Oh, I forgot the H. Is that better than an 8-core processor with 2.4 gigahertz? That's also a tricky situation. In situations where more cores are good, it's maybe if you're doing like machine learning on your computer, not through the internet, through the cloud services like ChatGPT or whatever, but locally on a machine. Or if you're doing something like 3D modeling of some kind, more cores could actually work out better for you, that extra kick in horsepower. More threads actually works out better with certain applications like video editing. Uh, DaVinci Resolve uses a lot of threads. Um, Adobe Premiere Pro, <coughs> which I'm canceling, um, uses a lot of threads more efficiently than it would the cores. Some, that's just an example of where software is just better optimized for threads. In this example, the last one is tricky for gamers because having too many cores, it can become useless. So if someone said, hey, you know, I'm choosing between an eight core processor and a 16 core processor, I wanna do a video game. I would say go with the eight core processor. A lot of video games do not use the full potential of that many cores. They're not designed to use that many cores or threads. 16 cores, 32 threads. It just, it's very, very rare. You wanna invest and save that money on a processor by not overspending into a better graphic card because a graphic card is more important in that case. And the core clock speed per the less cores works out better for gaming for, for some examples. So it's very situation dependent. So it's not an answer. What can you do then as a consumer? Well, if you're gonna buy your next machine, what do you do? Honestly, I said this in the CPU clock speed video, which I explained clock speed. Again, the link to that playlist is in the video description. At the end of that video, I'm gonna say the exact same thing. Look at benchmarks. Look at what other real uh, journalists and consumers are saying. I highly recommend Hardware Canucks as a YouTube channel. Gamers Nexus is excellent. A uh, Hardware Unboxed. I have no affiliation with any of these channels. I'm just trying to provide information for you, the consumer. So look at benchmarks because they go through video rendering uh, uh, benchmarks, gaming benchmarks, and they give you real life example situations. That's the best way to determine what is the best processor for you. And again, there's no real answer. Is more cores and threads better or less cores with higher clock speed? It 
just takes a little bit of research. It's not that complicated. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, sure to go my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, it literally helps my channel grow. And thanks for watching.